So right now we're here, and there's almost 600 theaters across America that are showing this story. Um, I'm trying to stay focused, but my phone's blowing up with people in theaters all over America that are watching this. And I just was thinking, God, you are so wild. Like, we did a premiere in Los Angeles. We did one in New York City a couple days ago. And the night it releases, I'm in Maine. <laughs> what are you doing, God? <laughs> um, and... Uh, I, I just, it, the whole thing's wild, and, and I, I want to get into a little bit of it, but I want to also dovetail to what Patricia was saying, too. I just, you know, this is a sign and a wonder. I mean, not, not just for the church, not just for us. I mean, you, you don't get these kind of films in that many theaters. Like, you don't, it just, it just doesn't happen. And, and especially, this is the first full-length film in movie theaters about what took place during the pandemic in America. Think about this. There was a lot of stories within that story. I mean, there, I, I, nobody's come out with a story about the lockdowns yet or how they've impacted culture and society or the vaccines and their efficiency or mass. Did they work? Did they not? Governmental overreach, all this stuff. There's a lot of th stories that have never been told. And tonight, the first story about the pandemic, the most difficult period in modern history is God's story. Isn't that wild? And I got to be really honest, I, I, I'm so tricked into this thing because we were already so busy this year. You know, we just finished 170, our 175th city during, uh, since Let Us Worship began. And, and the last thing I wanted to do is take on a full-blown movie project. And I feel like the Lord, uh, you know, if, if I would have known the pain, the heartache, the difficulty that, that it would endure to get this thing to where it was, I would definitely have said no in the beginning. And yet I got tricked again. And <laughs> we're, you know, it, it cost almost a million bucks, which is, I mean, a lot. I'm like, but compared to what it costs to do these things, it's nothing. Um, and I just want to, can I, can I just pray tonight? I'm just going to be selfish and pray that theaters all across America are filled with the presence of God tonight. The first time, and, and I, we, we had a screening last night in Augusta, and it was sold out, and it was really fun at the theater down there. There's, by the way, there's one theater in Maine showing it. So you got to go to Augusta Regal Cinemas if you want to see it. They're showing it for a week, which is really cool. Faith movies usually get one night and regal cinemas. Hey, how wild is this? The Christian movie industry, when we approached them and said, hey, we're doing this documentary, they were like, you know, we showed it to some executives, and I'm not going to name names, and I could, and now I know all their names. Um, and they were like, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's a little edgy. I'm like, it's just our story. Like, it's 2020. What do you, what do you think? What do you think we're going to do? Like it was edgy. We lived through it. It's like the book of revelation. <laughs> They're like, it's kind of edgy, but you know, even if we're going to think about it, we need you to change the name. This was the Christian movie industry said, you need to change the name. Like I said, what do you mean? The name's everything. <laughs> like it's taking what the enemy meant for evil and turning it around. We're owning the name the trolls gave us. We are super spreaders, right? But the Christian industry said, no, no, no you're going to have to change the name. And they were like, what, what if you call it like Let Us Worship? I'm like, that is so boring. Would never go see a movie like that. Um, and, uh, it, and then we showed it to the executives at Regal, at AMC, and Cinemark. We showed them all the same week, all the top executives. And they were like, this is incredible. Yes, we're going to show it. So we literally bypassed the gatekeepers of the Christian film industry and just went right to the, right to the top. Isn't that cool? But I want to pray tonight because right now people are watching this. Right now people are... They're, they're, they're watching God's story. Right now, the very same theaters that have discipled a generation 
into fear and death and horror movies and sex and perversion. These same theaters that have discipled the generation are now filled tonight with God's story over a generation. And so, Lord, we just pray, God, here from the state of Maine, Lord, that tonight across America, in almost 600 theaters, Lord, we pray that you would encounter people. We pray that you would arrest people with your power. Lord, we pray right now, God, as they're watching, that walls would break off them, that depression would break off of people. Lord, we pray, God, that they would go in one way and they would leave out another way. Lord, we pray that your spirit would permeate, Lord, those who would never go to a church are now inside of a theater and we say God get them with your love get them with your breakthrough Lord we pray God that the same story that you told God would you begin to write that over their life tonight we pray for a harvest of souls in the theaters across America in Jesus name amen I was I was praying today and 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 trying to not you know it's it's just like this thing where you invest so much time and energy and you're just hoping that what you put in is what you get out and it's just this really carnal way that we think a lot of times and and i it says that jesus went on a went up a mountain to pray so i went on a hill in maine (laughs) yeah and it was beautiful and uh and i went up to a hill and i just said god and I just felt like the Lord said, it's not about the end result or about the performance. It's about the faithfulness. And I think that in my life and probably in some of yours, we, we have a very carnal measuring stick. And now I hope that the film is amazing and I, I think it will do great. I don't know. I hope. But I, I think that we measure things according to the metrics of the world when God has a whole different system in place and i was sharing with our, our burn leaders because we're we're are having this conference and it's also coinciding with the burn summit with some of our leaders <clears throat> across america holla these guys are holding down the fort of worship and prayer in their communities and hosting day and night worship and and they're just champions and i was i was sharing with them this morning that you know it, it in the same verse where it says luke 18 Will I not grant justice to those that cry out day and night? At the very end of that verse, it says, but when the Son of Man returns, will he find faithfulness? And I just feel like this is a season of like super gritty, determined believers that are going to live in faithfulness. It's like the pandemic. Here's one of the things I've noticed, and, and I've seen a lot of cities. The pandemic, like rubbed the shine off of the church. Does that make sense? Like, let me just give you a little context. So I'm a worship leader in a really popular, successful church, and we sound so good, and we look so cool. (laughs) And we live stream, and everyone thinks we're cool, because we are. (laughs) And all of a sudden, when the governor tells you you can't meet in your building, and they're going to arrest you, or whatever, And you got to find God on the streets and on the beaches and under bridges. You got to get back to the gritty faithfulness of the gospel. Do we need all the trappings and the shine? Or can we rediscover what it's like to be a faithful believer? And I think that this is what the pandemic exposed. And I'm I'm like going to ramble tonight and share the Bible and ramble. And I think it'll be good, but just flow with me. Um, I was here a couple weeks ago in Maine. I can't, like, escape this place. Um, And I was here in Maine doing one of the biggest interviews I've ever had a chance to do. It was with uh, the number one cable news show in the history of America, Tucker Carlson. And I was doing uh, an hour-long interview, and and I, I was I wanted to do it because I don't see him talk to a lot of faith people or church people, and... You know, he, he, he seems like a guy that, like, searches for the truth, and he definitely has his ideas. And so I go in and I sit, and the interview released, by the way, you can watch the full interview. Um, but he says immediately, 
when I walk in the door, he goes, hey, man. He's like, I'm just going to be honest with you. I was like, whoa, okay, here we go. He's like, I know you're a church guy. I know you love God. He's like, I love God. But he's like, after I saw the way that the church handled the, the pandemic, he said, I will never, ever step foot in a church in my life again. And he said, it's not that I don't love God. And he's just like, I don't know who these people are. I don't know what happened. And, and so, like, you know, you'll notice in the course of the interview if you watch it, and I think it'll bless you if you watch it, you know, he's going to this dark. And I'm like, but the true remnant is arising. I'm like, you can look at it that way, or you can say God in his kindness is exposing things that need to be exposed so that the true remnant church of God can arise. And I, and I told him, I said, listen, I, I, I've seen it with my own eyes. Like, I understand you're frustrated. I, I am too. I mean, how, how, in, how in the world could worship outdoor in America be controversial? What is our problem? I mean, it's unbelievable. In fact, my wife, I, I may pull her up here to share something, but she, she was funny. We were sitting in a meeting with some leaders, and, and they were really upset at us, and we really loved them. And, and, and she said something like, well, I don't understand because, like, you guys supported us to go break the law in the Middle East for Jesus. <laughs> Like, like, you know when you were supporting us, we were breaking the law. Like, we were having church when they said you couldn't. We were passing out Bibles when they said you couldn't. We were doing altar calls when they said you couldn't. Like, we broke the law, and you loved it. And now here we are breaking the law in our own country. And by the way, if you use the whole Romans 13 thing, you have to adjust it according to the U.S. Constitution, which ensures your right to worship God. So even if that is your mindset, as we've seen now in California, the governor of California has been sued and five Supreme Court cases against him enshrined the right for the church to worship. So listen to this. Because of bold pastors in California, people say, oh, California's gone. People, no, no, no. California was where this movement began. We were the ones that had to wake up. And I, I remember it was funny because on our journey, we would be worshiping in California. And I just, I just, now we're in SoCal. And I'm like, I don't ever want to live in SoCal. People are so chill there. It's like surfers and they're so laid back. And I'm just not built like that, you know. And, and during the pandemic, people just started to rage for Jesus. I was like, what is happening here? Like, this is not SoCal culture. And so I remember, like, we're breaking the law, we're getting fined, we're getting, you know, saying that they're going to take us to jail, all this kind of stuff. And then we go to places like Texas where there's, like, no restrictions, and people are still shut down, and, and, and people get together, and they're all excited to fight. And I'm like, you have nothing to fight! <laughs> you could have had church the whole time! <laughs> But, but there's, something, there's something that happened in that season where the Lord was, was, was exposing in us. And, and, I, and I, I'm, I'm so grateful. And listen, I love conferences. I love events. I love, I love us getting together. I love the body of Christ. And I love how weird we are. And I just, I love, I'm, I'm like uber charismatic still, always will be. But it was like that season tested Every song we sing, every sermon we've preached, like, do we believe it? And here's the thing about this film, and I just want to say this, and I'm diving into the word. It's not a shameful thing. Like, I'm hoping people across America are going to the theater and watching it, and, and maybe they didn't know the story of what God was doing. Maybe they didn't see the miracles, the signs and wonders. And by the way, we tell the whole story in this film. So we got like our biggest trolls and adversaries on film sharing their point of view. It's one of the things I think the church has to get back to is better storytelling. 
You don't just hear about David's feats and victories. You hear about his downfall. You hear about the tough stuff. And sometimes we're, we just think the world wants to watch a Christian highlight film. And they want to know, like, Kate, we, Kate cries on there, you know. It's a great moment, babe, by the way. <laughs> it's powerful. Um, but we share the full story. And, 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 but one of the things I feel like is, is that we have the opportunity now to go back and assess and inventory our response in that season. Okay? So now we know what we know right? We're all, we were all conspiracy theorists. Okay, guess that one turned out to be true. 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 Okay. Fauci admitted he, he doesn't know anything about anything. We knew that. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Every day the rules were changing. I mean, even my kids were like, my kids were like, dad, like, we, we have to wear a mask to go sit down, but then we take it off when we're sitting down? <laughs> well, why? <laughs> well, son, because you can only get COVID when you're walking to your table. <laughs> Not when you're sitting at it. <laughs> it's science. <laughs> I mean, what is... <laughs> What just happened to us? <laughs> so anyway, but this gives us an opportunity to look back in inventory. And when you inventory, you look back. The, the good news is this. You can say, okay, man, like, like I wish I would have responded differently. I wish maybe I wouldn't have been so fearful. I wish maybe I would have da da da. And the good news is there's no shame because guess what? Another test is coming. Like, for reals. Like, you think this thing's over? It's just ramping up. I mean, they've told us it's coming again. It's not even like a surprise. And I don't say that to fear, to, 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 to make you fearful. I say that because guess what? God does his best work in the darkest days. I didn't even give a rip about America before this season. For real, I'm a missions kid. I care about the nations. And all of a sudden, I'm stuck in California out of all places. All my international trips are canceled, and I have to, to try to divert my passion to a state that I don't even love. I mean, y'all got to understand, I grew up in Montana. Like, like, I'm a Montana kid. What unites Montanans together is their hatred for California. That's like how we connect. And so now I'm stuck in the most restricted state with the most psycho governor, with the most crazy regulations. And yet what we've done in North Korea and what we've done in Iraq and what we've done in Afghanistan and how the Lord sent us into, now we're going to our own cities of San Francisco and Seattle and Portland and L.A. and and, and, and I, I, I didn't have hope for America because I didn't know that there really was a harvest. And all of a sudden, we're seeing it. I mean, the first time we went to Portland, we had 7,000 people there. I didn't even know 7,000 Christians lived in Portland, Oregon. <laughs> and I'm telling you, there is a move of God coming to America. And in many ways, we can be very grateful. I don't think God caused the pandemic. I don't think he caused the virus. I don't believe that. He's not the author of sickness and death and fear. But he will use it. And I believe God's using this. And so we have a chance to take an inventory. And I believe that's part of what this weekend is. Like, how do we want to live our life? How do we want to follow Jesus? I mean, this is a season like we don't have... This is not a season of, like, spectators anymore. This is not spectator Christianity. We need everybody in the game. We need everybody activated. We need everybody taking ground. We need everybody in their calling. We need everybody going full-blown gangster for Jesus. 
And I feel like, I feel like, you know, people are talking about those crazy Christians. I'm like, you haven't seen anything yet. I mean, I was just in Times Square with the, I mean, it blew my mind. I've done a lot of ministry in New York. I've never seen this side of New York. We were setting up sound equipment in Times Square. And, you know, New Yorkers, like, hate Times Square. It's so, like, you know, commercialized and whatever. And we're there, and there's a thousand intercessors an hour and a half early in the rain that are standing in Times Square going, you know, walking around waving flags. I'm like, these people are wild. <laughs> and, then, and then, of course, we had a couple protesters there. They come to everything. We love it. You know, they keep it fun. And they have these signs, F the church. And then there's that famous lady there that's, you know, the abortion activist lady that carries baby dolls with their heads ripped off. And she's walking around. And it was funny because when they showed up, I'm like, y'all came to the wrong meeting. <laughs> and immediately it was like the intercessors went, shaka da and started laying their hands on them. <laughs> These protesters were freaked out of their mind. I mean, people blowing shofars over them. It was unbelievable. I mean, they got out of there so quick. <laughs> but you wouldn't have seen that pre-COVID, pre-pandemic. You wouldn't have seen that hunger. You wouldn't have seen that fire. You wouldn't have seen that, that gritty desire to want to see God move in their city. I was moved. And we went two hours, two and a half hours, and we could have gone for five. No one wanted to leave. It was this tangible. It was like the presence of God dropped into that, the most distracted place in the world. Like a Holy Spirit bomb went off. And that's when I said, you know what? If he can do it in Times Square, Manhattan, he can do it anywhere. And I believe, and we're going to see it. I'm, I, I, I believe we're going to see Things happen in this election that we never dreamed would happen. But I believe we're going to start seeing things over cities that people say are impossible. Over states that people say are impossible. I'm, I mean, I believe it's going to happen. This is the hour God, if he can take our story and broadcast it to 600 theaters, he can do anything. I want to talk about the um, OG super spreaders where super spreaders began. You like that title, bro? It's pretty sweet. Original gangster super spreaders. Actually, before I do that, I want to show you one, one video. I want to just celebrate something. We just uh, came up on our two-year anniversary. We're actually in Johannesburg, South Africa, uh, two months ago, and, and I didn't even realize it till we got there, but it was, it was two years since we started Let Us Worship, which is really just the burn on steroids and everything else we've been doing our whole life. Um, and we were gathered in Joburg, and we had um, the largest gathering of humans in three years in that country. It was insane, like 10,000 South Africans. And... Um, you know, they were really locked down. They were one of the most locked down nations in the world. And so they haven't had any gatherings, any church. And they were like, I don't think we're going to be able to do it. And I, we were praying and fasting. And, and literally four days before we landed, they lifted all restrictions. And so we gathered and, um, and we shared this video there. And I just, can, can you play that two-year video? And then we're going to jump into the book of Acts. Started. You can turn it up. Thank you. But this is not a protest, even though in a sense it is. This is a gathering. To I believe out of the mouth of babes and sucklings you've ordained praise to silence the foe of the Avenger.
to break. How many of you are here and ready for something to break? Something to break off of Seattle. Something to break off of the Northwest. It's going to happen tonight. We release that same sound that removes the heavy choked up. <laughs> Acts chapter 4. So it takes a certain kind of faith to block out the distractions and the societal pressure and follow the, the voice of the Lord. And um, you could call it a stubborn faith. You could call it the fear of the Lord, not the fear of men. You could call it the unwillingness to bow. And I just always, I think we've really kind of twisted in some ways misused the word honor because a lot of times, if we're not honoring the Lord first, it's not real honor. Right. You wouldn't believe how many times I heard people, oh, we just want to honor our governor. And I'm like, your governor is psycho. 
okay? We need to honor the Lord. And we honor the Lord by bringing the kingdom. Well, Daniel, Daniel, well, hey, Daniel was the one that opened his windows and said, watch me pray. That's some bold faith. So Acts 4, you have um, the, the original super spreaders, and they're, uh, they got in trouble a lot. <laughs> like, that's the whole book of Acts. It's like them getting in trouble, God getting them out of trouble. They gather together to pray so that they can get in more trouble. Then they get in trouble again. I don't know why we're so afraid of conflict and controversy. It's followed the church for 2,000 years. You can't escape it. I mean, we're in, we're in such a psychotic era. They're trying to mutilate children without their parents' consent. And we're just trying to have church. I mean, these are dark times. And so anyway, we see, we see in Acts 4, it says, when they saw the courage of Peter and John, verse 13, and realized they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. The PhD guys really didn't get behind us, in case you're wondering, in this journey. I remember the first time I went into Portland, this is in the film, I couldn't find anybody. I'm like, we're writing these songs, these worship hits about slaying the Goliath in the land, and we're going to take ground, and we're going to take what the enemy's stolen. We're going to bring the light in the darkness. And I'm like, Where am I, where's my squad at? It's a dark city. Couldn't find sound gear, couldn't find a band, couldn't find musicians, and then I got a call from a Russian church. They're like, we'll go with you. I was like, really? You don't even know me. They're like, no, no, Americans don't understand. They don't understand this moment. If we don't fight and we don't bring Jesus this place is going to end up looking like the place we fled. They understood the stakes. So they took note these men had been with Jesus, but since they could, but since they could see the man who had healed standing there in front of them, there was nothing they could say. So they ordered them. Funny story. We're in one, a city. <laughs> and they were calling us racists. And they were calling us white supremacists and they're, you know, all the 2020 stuff. And, uh, and they were like, had these signs and they're protesting. And then they didn't realize we had like, we opened the, the service with like four black preachers. <laughs> <laughs> Preaching about how Jesus is the only hope to bring reconciliation between races. Jesus is the only hope to end this string of violence. The guys were like putting their signs down. <laughs> There's a man that was healed right in front of them. They couldn't say anything, so they ordered them to withdraw from the Sanhedrin, and then they conferred together. They said, verse 16, what are we going to do with these men? They asked, everyone living in Jerusalem's knows they have performed a notable sign, and we cannot deny it. But to stop this thing from spreading any further. <laughs> this is where it comes from. We must warn them to no longer speak in, to anyone in his name. That's going to do the trick. Let's warn them. <laughs> We're going to warn them there's a new regulation that just came down. And what you're doing, you can't do. Well, they didn't know who they're dealing with. So they called them in again and they commanded them not to speak or teach in the name of Jesus. Verse 19. But Peter and John replied, which is right in God's eyes, to listen to you or to him? I mean, he just went right to the throat. Which is right in God's eyes to listen to you or to him. You be the judges. As for us, we can.
cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. Basically, we're not going to stop. There's a spirit of intimidation across America right now. Now, I'm talking post-COVID, post row. There's a spirit of intimidation that wants the church to shut up, return back to the way that you were, get back in your building, stay out of the, this arena, stay out of this arena, stay out of this arena, separation of church and state, stay in your corner and be quiet. There's a spirit. And I'm telling you guys, that is not the gospel. We're called to go everywhere. We're called to be the virus that no one can escape. I remember I was, I was in the Capitol building. Uh, the Lord's, as I mentioned, the Lord's given us this amazing property on Capitol Hill. We've been praying for years, and it's just, it's incredible. Bernie Sanders is a couple doors down from us. Mitch McConnell's across the street. There's other senators. I mean, we're literally right in the middle of it. And every day we're praying, God, every time they pass by this little door, let them get wrecked. <laughs> but we've also had these amazing opportunities to go into the Capitol. And so I was in there with my guitar and um, I was worshiping. And it just was this moment where I'm like, you know what? Like, and Christians were like, I can't believe you're doing that. I can't believe you're doing it. You're bringing a guitar in the Capitol. I can't believe you're doing that. I'm like, why not? Not only is this whole Capitol have Bible verses everywhere, it has a chapel inside of it. Did you know there's a chapel right next to Nancy Pelosi's office? That's where the chapel is, in the Capitol. It's incredible. And, and so I brought the guitar in, and I just feel like, and so now I'm getting these worship leaders in D.C., and I'm like, we need to go get on a rotation. Every week, one of y'all needs to go in there. We got to change that atmosphere. Worship is the weapon, and you got it. And I feel like this is a season where we just need to start going into places and dreaming the dreams of God that we've been told for so long are impossible. Listen, if God can overturn Roe in our day, he can do anything. I don't think some of you understand how outrageous that is, that one far shot, random, quirky president could get three Supreme Court justices and that he actually put pro-life ones on there and that God would use that and that he would overturn a death decree in America that's been here for 50 years. Now, I know we're fighting at the state level and all that stuff, but do you understand how significant that is? Anything's possible. Turn to someone and say, anything's possible. So they warned them, verse 21, after further threats, they let them go. They could not decide how to punish them because all the people were praising God for what had happened. For the man who was miraculously healed was over 40 years old. Those principalities and powers that are trying to intimidate us are full of crap. I've tested them in every state. They are all bark and no bite. Their whole goal is fear and intimidation. But if people rise up in this season and they say, not on my watch. Not only will you attract an anointing from heaven, because here's the thing. Boldness is what marks the book of Acts. It's not just the fact that they spoke in tongues and were filled with the Spirit, but it's that they proclaimed the Word of God boldly. You see it over and over and over again. So, so they get in trouble. They let them go. Then what do they do? Well, we see that they gather together in a couple verses down in verse 29, and they got together and prayed, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. They're literally praying, we weren't bold enough. Make us more bold. <laughs> and it says, stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant Jesus. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly my prayer after this conference is not that we just 
we just get together and have this nostalgic time of worship and we get blasted and rocked and whatever. My, my prayer is that we take the state of Maine after this conference. No, I'm serious. My prayer is that we shift the atmosphere over this state. My prayer is that Christians in this state rise up. My prayer is New England. New England is always the place people whine about. And I'm telling you, this is the region of so much history, revival history. And it's time for us to rise up and say, God, you've done it before. You can do it again. There's more of us than, than we realize. I mean, we went to Boston Commons, and, and, and it was a last-minute thing. We had 3,000 people there. There are worshipers. There are bold people across this region. And I get excited. You know, people ask us all the time. I was with Governor Ron DeSantis at the beginning of this year, and he said, man, why are you in California? Why don't you come to the free state? We would love to have you here. Let us worship, whatever. And I looked at him, and I said, man, that would be amazing, but who's going to fight for California? It's horrible strategy for Christians to abandon hard places. <laughs> it's like, it's the weirdest thing. People are like, let's go to Texas and Florida. Now, yeah, those places are great. But like, that's your strategy to change America? All the Christians and the conservatives, let's move to one place and build bunkers <laughs> and ride it out? That's not the kingdom I want to be a part of. Right? I mean, th this is the hour. And I'm telling you, they messed. It's like the enemy messed too much with California. Like, it's, it's, it's starting to shift in the state that I live. And, and it's amazing how it's like you have no authority over the place you don't love. And I had to, like, fall in love with God's prophetic destiny. I remember uh, Bill uh, Johnson, who's my pastor, he gave me the Life magazine because I, I, I had prayed this prayer in the Golden Gate Bridge. I said, I said, God, send another Jesus people movement. Send it to America. Send it to California. And, and he, he said, I saw what you said. He said, you know, that, that whole thing started here. Like this. Is it. And I was like, yeah, I heard that. And so he ordered the Life magazine from, I think it's 1967 or 68. The one with the Jesus guy, the one-way shirt. He sent me an original copy. And he said, you need to read this. And at that time, I was still mad at California. I was still mad at our governor. I still thought the whole thing was going to burn and fall into the ocean. <laughs> and I started opening the pages of this Life magazine from the late 60s. And I started looking at these images of people getting baptized at Laguna Niguel and, 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 and people getting wrecked and hippies coming to Jesus and people worshiping in San Francisco. And I started to see God's destiny and dream over my state that I never saw before. And all of a sudden, this love rose up in my heart. And I remember that day I was in my office and I was just, and I just was crying. I said, God, forgive me for hating this place. Like, you've set me here. Obviously, you haven't put me here to die. Obviously, you've charted a course of breakthrough for me. But I, before I pray the prayers, I want to have a love in my heart so that there's some kind of authority there. And I believe that it's even time for us to shift the way that we pray and to shift the way that we dream because it's so easy to get caught in the negativity. But yet God has put us here for an opportunity. And I love, and this is one of the reasons I love Jamie. I'm like, he's holding on to Maine with his hand in through the winter. <laughs> unwilling to let go. He even lost all his hair. <laughs> and he's like, it's gone, but I'm not letting go. And I love that. And it's that grittiness and determination that's planting these churches across the state. And we need a hundred more, a thousand more people like him. And Shannon, amen. I want to read one more verse, then I want to pray. Hebrews, Hebrews 12. I, I, I just am so filled with expectation. If, if you've, and I don't have time to go into all the things that I've seen, but there is such a massive exposing that's coming. 
It's, it's absolutely so unbelievable. It's going to blow people's minds. And yet with that, it's not God in his mercy is going to expose things. And then he's going to reveal the real church. And there's a church rising in America right now. There are people that God has handpicked. There are intercessors that are senators. There are prayer warriors that are congressmen and women. There are people that God has placed and infiltrated into different industries. I mean, this is the season, man, where we are filling the earth with the fragrance of Christ. People say Christian nationalism. I say, well, if that means we want God at the center of the nation, I'm all about it. If that means that we want Jesus to be the king over America, I'm all about it. If that means that I want the Bible to be taught in this nation again and prayers to be prayed, I'm all about it. Guilty as charged. In Hebrews, it talks about the two, the two dynamics. It talks about the mountain of fear, the mountain of joy. That's not the part I'm going to read, but, but I love that. It's the two reactions. You know, this is not the Old Testament season of fear and gloom, but this is Mount Zion, the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, thousands of angels in joyful assembly. But then it goes down here and it says, verse 26, at that time his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised once more, I will shake not only the earth, but I will also shake the heavens. The word once more indicate the removing of what can be shaken, that is created things, so that what cannot be shaken may remain. Anybody been shaken up in the last season? Four people. Listen, it's so good. We needed to be shaken. Seriously, we were so complacent. We were so in a rut. We were on autopilot. We needed, we needed the resistance. We needed the pushback. We needed, you know, it's, it's funny. I'll never forget, like, the day that the Super Spreader article came out in Rolling Stone on the front page. I was like, ah, not Rolling Stone. Like, I mean, I know they're like a leftist whatever, but, like, they're a music magazine. I'm a musician. It would be cool to have, like, a positive article in there. And I was really bummed. I was like, God, this is bad. And all my friends were sending it to me, LOL. <laughs> Trolling me. And I had one friend that called me and he said, and I, or I called him. I said, dude, this is bad. Like, we got to write a, like a, a response to this. And we got to write a press release or something. Like, we got to explain. Like, we weren't super spreaders. And he's like, no, no, no. This is genius. He said, you don't understand the marketing power this has. He says, no, no. What we need to do is send them more pictures of your rallies. Get them to rerun the article. He's like, you are a super spreader. Just own it. They're promoting the movement for you. And I was like, okay, that's one way to look at it. And it was amazing how every time the resistance came, God turned it around. You know, I remember we went to uh, Tempe, Arizona. I'm bringing up Arizona because that's where she's from. And, and, and we got fined massive in that city. Like, just, I mean, I, and, and I always like to pick, like, the really, like, we go to Texas. I like to go to Austin. Like California, I like to go to San Francisco. Like, I, I like to go to the... The, 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 the rowdy places, you know. And so we were in Tempe by the university, and it was, uh, and we had like 8,000 people there. And sure, they had BLM rallies and all that kind of stuff, and they cheered them on, but Christians came, and it was like, whoa, you know. So we got fined a lot of money. And I remember thinking, God, we can't even pay this. Like, like we're barely pulling off the events. What's going to happen? And so we threw, threw up a newsletter, Arizona, you know, find us, pray for us. And it was just like all of a sudden within literally 15 minutes, 10 times the amount of our fine was donated. Four of the biggest Liberty law firms in America called me, said, we will fight this. This is going to be fun. 
let's do it. And they took on the case and we fought it and we won. So where we see pushback and resistance, God turns it to opportunity. You know, we see controversy and God says, I'm going to do something here. But it says the words once more indicate the removing of what can be shaken so that what cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, verse 28, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful. Gratitude. And so worship God acceptably with reverence and offer our God as a consuming fire. So how do we respond in seasons where everything that can be shaken can be shaken? Well, we're grateful. Just, you made it past the book of Revelation 2020. You guys are all alive. You're here. Good. You made it. Turn to someone and say, I made it. You're here. Tenacious love once again. Let us be thankful and let us worship. Let us be thankful and let us worship. Let us be thankful and let us worship. Everything is shaking around us and we are so unoblivious and so unaware because we're in the glory zone. We're worshiping inflation, the market's crashing, Russia, Ukraine, all this stuff, and we're just, we're just worshiping. And there's an element where it's like, even for me as a worship leader, I mean, I'm a songwriter and a worship leader and make albums and all that kind of stuff, but for me, like, worship became a lifeline. It wasn't like the precursor to the message or the start of a service. Like, it was like the way we survived, <laughs> And I think that we're going back to the days, and, and this, is, this is what I want to get to today. I believe that the, the post-COVID church is different. The way we respond, the way that we worship, the hunger that we have, the dreams of God that he's given us, nothing is too difficult, nothing is too hard. There is no mountain we can't take. There is no industry we cannot infiltrate. There is no law that can't be overturned. There is no precedent that can't be established. There, there is nothing too difficult. What is too hard for the Lord? It's like the kids' songs. We just need to start singing those again. My God is so big, so strong, and so mighty. God cannot do my God is so big, so strong, and so... Come on, Jamie, do the motions. My God can't... Yeah, come on, come on, come on. This is how we're going to end it. This is powerful. My, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. We'll get... I, that's the bridge. I don't know that part. We'll get to that in a minute, okay. Oh, okay, well, we'll get... You do the bridge. I'll do the, the verse, you do the bridge, okay? My God is so big... So strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. Ooh, that's like a dab. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. All right, do the bridge. The mountains are his, the valleys are his, the stars are his handiwork too. God's so big. The mountains are here, the valleys are here, the stars are here, too. My God is so big, so strong, and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do for you. <laughs>